And you're off to the North Pole in, in the spring. spring. Indeed, yes, yeah, next March, which, which uh, seems like a long way away for ages and now seems pretty close, looming large. And uh, you know, it's getting colder outside, so it's starting to feel a bit real now. So um, it's always a bit strange when you shops in the summer. You know, Absolutely. Cold, 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 long way away, but... Now, when it comes to giving something back from expeditions, one of the yep. big things that you do mm -hmm. is give something back by allowing people to actively engage in your projects. Absolutely. So your last uh, big Arctic expedition, how many people were able to reach you through the internet, okay. through your website? Massive, massive. We had, uh, and, and, and this was completely unexpected, we, we had eight and a half million visitors, unique visitors, to this website in four months. So huge, huge, huge. And, and the potential that this has only hit me about two weeks into it. I was skiing along, I saw some polar bear prints, which, which is always alarming. And I said, I thought, hang on, I, I thought, I'm a mammal, I need water to drink. You know, I'm dragging a sledge with a load of fuel in it so I can melt snow to get drink. Bears are mammals, 10 times as big as me. They don't have cookers. It's minus 40, all the water's frozen. What, what, what do bears drink? <laughs> I couldn't figure this out. So I posted this, and I knew we had a lot of schools following trips, so I posted right. this as a question for the day. And we had 480 something emails in, wow. in a few hours. Um, the answer is they don't drink. Uh, they all the need from, from, from meat. Really, there's real potential here to get kids particularly engaged, actually interacting with these expeditions as they're happening. And now you're going to an environment which is absolutely under the media microscope. Indeed. I mean, more perhaps than the, even than the Amazon, yeah. the Arctic and the rapid melt there is the hot subject, if you would excuse yeah. the pun. Yeah. Yeah. So is that something you want to capitalise on for your next trip? It is. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to think I'm sort of jumping on the, sure. the, the greenwashing bandwagon, but equally, I, I do think that I can give a, a pretty unique perspective and a fairly unbiased, uh, you know, layman's point, I'm not a scientist, um, there's no political agenda, so I'm just going out there, you know, doing my thing, and, and, and through the technology we have nowadays, I can actually say, look, this is, this is what's going on, draw your own conclusions, here are my photos from seven years ago, here's some video from today, this is what's, this is what's changing. So, and you're at the coal face, they're going to see you donning your dry suit if you need to swim a lead. Entering, yeah, absolutely. So, for students in particular, they're seeing real life effects of global warming absolutely. rather than reading about it absolutely. in a kind of analytical or, or detached way. some sort of chart bar graph. You, know, you can't really, it's difficult to, 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 to get excited about statistics. Yeah. You can't really feel statistics. So, yeah. so I like to think that, that I can actually try and engage people with the environment in real time as these actually happen. So that, that is very exciting. Fantastic. Great, Ben. I'll let you back, back to your lunch. Thanks See you later on. Thank you.